Welcome back. So we've been talking a lot about uh, differential equations and derivatives of functions. And today I'm going to talk about numerical differentiation, how you differentiate functions without taking the limit uh, as you know, delta x or delta t goes to 0. So we're going to be looking uh, at some function in this lecture, f of t. Okay, so we have some time variable, some f of t. And you'll recall from kind of your high school or college calculus class or from uh, the review earlier that you can essentially approximate this derivative at some point t by the slope of the line connecting f at t and f at t plus some little delta t. So some little delta t here. And this line connecting these two points is going to approximate the slope of the tangent line at t, which is the derivative df dt. So um, given a function, given a function, uh, and we're going to say given a function f of t, and everything I'm going to tell you today doesn't actually only apply to functions f of t. This would also apply if you wanted to take the numerical derivative of a data set. Let's say I have measurements of some system in time and I want to approximate the derivative from the, that measurement data. That also works. So given a function or data, and this is a big deal, right? Like data science is becoming a huge part of all of science. If you want to get a job in industry, uh, oftentimes you're going to be doing numerical differentiation not on functions but on actual raw measurement data. So what I'm going to show you is general for a function or for data. So given a function f of t, we know that we define the derivative uh, df dt. df dt is the limit as delta t goes to 0, as delta t goes to 0 of my f at this point on the right, that's f of t plus delta t minus my, my value f at the point on the left, f of, f of t divided by delta t. And so essentially what we're doing is we're taking the limit as this approach becomes infinitesimally close to the point on the left. So we're making delta t go to zero. So these points get arbitrarily close together. And this dashed line is going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to that perfect tangent line, which is the derivative at f of t. Okay, that's, uh, you know, that's what we know from calculus. And we've spent a lot of time in our lives taking this limit as delta t goes to zero and really making this infinitesimal limit to get this derivative. So that's how we are used to thinking about the derivative df dt. But what I'm going to show you in this lecture and probably the next five or ten lectures is that numerically when you want to do this on a computer or when you want to do this on data, it's often convenient not to take the limit as delta t goes to zero uh, and just to say that this is approximately equal to this expression here. So we can approximate the derivative of a function df dt by taking this simple finite difference, this difference over a finite delta t uh, time step. And so this is going to be the basis of most of numerical differentiation, um, numerical integration of functions. If I want to simulate an ordinary differential equation, if I want to simulate something like um, dx dt equals f of x, then I can approximate dx dt using this formula. I can say that you know, dx dt is approximately x at t plus delta t minus x at t divided by delta t. This is approximately equal to f of x. And this is f of x at time t. Let's just be very, very explicit here, f of x at time t f of x at time t. Uh, so all I've done here, this is my differential equation I'm interested in simulating. All I'm doing is approximating this derivative using this finite difference here. And so pretty easy to just multiply delta t on both sides and add x of t. And I get an expression for x at time t plus delta t, which is approximately equal to x at t plus delta t f of x at t. And so this is actually a, an update rule. You can code this up in a computer, in Python, in MATLAB, in Julia, whatever you prefer. You can code this up. And if you have the state of your system x at time t, and you can evaluate the right-hand side f 
at x of t, then everything on the right is known and I can approximate x at the next time step. And then if I have this data, I can plug that in for x and f of x, and I can approximate x at the next time step, and I can step my system forward in time. This is called a numerical integrator. So we can integrate our ordinary differential equations using this kind of finite difference approximation to the derivative, okay? So what we're gonna do in this lecture and this is not the only approximation to the derivative. This is actually kind of a bad approximation to the derivative. Um, this is gonna, as we're, sh we're gonna show, this has a pretty big error. Um, and this is actually not the best numerical integrator. This is kind of a poor numerical integrator. So what we're gonna do in this lecture and in the next few lectures is we're gonna look at things like what is the error in this approximation? We know it's only approximately equal to this. So what is that error? Uh, is it big, is it small? Does it scale with delta t? Does it get smaller when delta t gets smaller? If so, how fast? You know, if delta t gets 10 times smaller, does this get 10 times smaller? We're gonna ask and answer questions like that. So things like, you know, what are the error of these schemes? Uh, what are some better schemes, you know, better formulas that would give me a higher accuracy approximation of this derivative. And then in a few lectures, we're gonna start using it for this numerical integration scheme here um, that I'm alluding to, okay? And we're gonna be able to do this all on functions f of t or if I have data sets, if I have you know literally data collected at discrete delta t's, um, you know, maybe my boss emails me a data set and says, hey, what's the derivative of this data? What's the rate of change of this data in time? I'll show you how to, um, you know, approximate those derivatives numerically on data as well. So that's all coming up. Um, and so let, let's jump in. I think I want to actually do this uh, today. So the basic way that we are going to understand the error of these kinds of approximations. So we're gonna start by just looking at this one and then I'm gonna drive a few better, better ones. Uh, the way that we're going to approximate this error is by looking at the Taylor series expansion of this f of t plus delta t um, about a base point f of t. So we're going to expand this thing out, we're gonna get a bunch of terms uh, and then we're gonna see kind of how the, um, the full expansion relates to this derivative. So I'm gonna write down some math. Uh, I'm going to write down um, equation one is going to be f of t plus delta t. And you should be really good at computing these, uh, these Taylor series expansions. If you don't remember, just go to the video, uh, the refresher on Taylor series. So this equals uh, f of t plus the derivative df dt, df dt evaluated at time t uh, times delta t plus uh, delta t squared over two factorial times the second derivative, df squared dt squared evaluated at t, plus uh, delta t cubed over three factorial times the third derivative of f with respect to t cubed at t plus dot, 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 dot. And I'm just gonna say order delta t to the fourth and higher. Okay, so I want you to get used to this notation, this kind of big O notation, this order, this kind of a curly O of delta t to the fourth. That means that this is an infinite series uh, and all of the terms have at least a power of delta t to the fourth or higher. It's order delta t to the fourth or higher. That's what that little O means right there. So this is the Taylor series of f of t plus delta t. And I'm also going to write down the Taylor series of f of t minus delta t, this point here, because we're also gonna compare, you know, what, is, what if I approximate my derivative using this slope on the left? Or what if I approximate my derivative using the slope between these two points, uh, t plus delta t and t minus delta t? Which one of those is better? Which one is more accurate? Which one will have more error? We're gonna understand them using these Taylor series. So just bear with me, I'm gonna write down the Taylor series for f of t minus delta t. It's gonna be very similar star star equation, uh, f of t minus delta t equals, and I'm pretty sure the only thing that's gonna be different is that these delta t's are gonna be negative delta t's, and so the odd terms are gonna be negative while the even terms are still gonna be positive. So this is still f of t, now we get minus uh, delta t df dt evaluated at t, plus delta t squared over two factorial d squared f dt squared evaluated at t. Now minus, whoops, that's not supposed to happen. 
uh, minus delta t cubed over 3 factorial d cubed f dt cubed evaluated t plus dot 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 because all I'm doing here is I'm plugging in a negative delta t every time I see a delta t here and so all the odd powers negative to an odd power is still negative are negative all the even powers are positive because negative squared and to the fourth are positive so these are going to be the two Taylor series approximations we're going to use to understand the error of these types of expressions um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to compute you know I'm literally going to plug this in here, and I'm going to cancel some terms out and see it's going to look a lot like DFDT, but there's going to be some error associated with this approximation. And we're going to quantify and analyze and understand that. And then we're going to see can we cook up a better scheme than this using these Taylor series? Okay, so let's do that. Um, and so I'm, I'm just going to start off with the simplest one, and then we're going to build to more and more sophisticated. So we're going to start off with this. Uh, this is called the forward difference, because I take the difference of my point I care about t and a point to the forward of it, a forward difference with uh, t plus delta t. So um, let, let me actually just write that down. So forward, forward difference. This is one scheme. Mathematicians are always scheming. Okay, so forward difference scheme is uh, dfdt is approximately equal to f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by delta t. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to take this star equation, plug it in here, cancel as much stuff as I can, and we're going to see how close does that equal actual dfdt, which is what I want. And so um, I'm going to do some of this in my head. This is really not hard. You can pause here and actually write this out long form if you want, but it's pretty easy. What we're doing is we're taking um, f of t plus delta t minus f of t. So if I subtract f of t, I get rid of this first term, and I just have everything to the right of that. And then I'm going to divide by delta t. So I've, I've subtracted this f of t. Now I'm dividing by delta t. So all of these powers of delta t get dropped by one power. So I have uh, df dt plus d squared f dt times a single delta t over 2 factorial. This term is going to be this term, but with a delta t squared, because I divided by delta t, and so on and so forth. So this equals, you know, we, we got rid of this, divided by delta t. So this equals df dt plus d squared f dt squared times delta t over 2 factorial plus, and I could write this out, you know, I have a d squared, no, sorry, d cubed f dt cubed delta t squared over 3 factorial plus dot 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 higher order terms. So this is like this expansion here, if I take the exact Taylor series for this term and I plug it in and I cancel all the terms, I get the thing I want, and all of this is error. Okay, all of this is the error in this approximation. So this finite difference, uh, forward difference derivative, is what I want plus some error. And the error is, we say, this is on the order of delta t. Because what we're going to be doing is making delta t smaller to control this error. And if we make delta t smaller, this term is going to be the one that dominates. So if I, for a small delta t, delta t squared is so much smaller than delta t to the first power that we basically say that all of these are negligible. And this is the leading order error term. So this is the leading uh, leading order error term. Okay, and so this error is on the order of delta x. Basically, every error term has a delta x or higher power. And so we're, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about what this error means, but, but just right now, very briefly, what this means is that I can control the error of my approximation. I can make the error of this approximation smaller by making delta, that's not delta x, that should be delta t. I can make the error of my approximation smaller by making delta t smaller, okay, by making delta by making delta t smaller. So if I want, in this case, because my leading error is just per linearly proportional to delta t, if I want my error to be 10 times less, I should make my delta t 10 times smaller. If I want my error to be 100 times less, I should make my delta t 100 times smaller. 
And again, these terms here are so negligible, I'm just gonna ignore them. If I make my delta t 100 times smaller, this term gets 100 times smaller, this term gets 10,000 times smaller, the next term gets a million times smaller. So they get smaller so much faster, I only really have to care about this leading error term here. And so this is the name of the game. You can take an approximation, you can use the Taylor series to figure out is it the thing I want in the first place, and what is the error of that approximation. Good. So I'm going to write down a few others, and then we're going to you know, plot them in MATLAB and actually see if the error behaves the way we, we expect it to. Okay, so that was forward difference. Um, maybe I'll switch to, to orange now, and I'll do a backward difference. Backward uh, difference. And this backward difference um, is exactly the same, except now we're going to use f of t and f of t minus delta t. So we're going to say uh, df dt is approximately equal to f of t minus f of t minus delta t divided by delta t. And again, I'm going to take this uh, star star equation here for this Taylor series and plug it in here. And now it is f of t minus all of this. So these f of t still cancel. And all of these uh, terms become negative of what they are. And then I divide by delta t. So I killed the f of t, I divide it by delta t, and I have a minus sign. So again, the first term is df dt, which is good. There's no delta t because I divided by delta t. The second term is minus d squared f dt squared delta t over 2 factorial, now plus d cubed f dt cubed delta t squared over 3 factorial plus dot 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 again. And so again, this is the thing I want. And this is all of my error. My error is here. And again, this error, you can see, it has the exact same form. It's on the order of delta t. Um, you know, it's just there's a minus sign here and a plus sign here. That doesn't matter. But it's on the order of delta t, which means, again, backwards difference and forwards difference are going to have approximately the same uh, error scaling with delta t. Okay, So if I want to make my error smaller here, I have to make my delta t smaller proportionally. Good. Um, and so you might ask yourself, well, are all finite difference derivatives using you know, these, these points at a delta t apart, are all of them order delta t? Can we do better than this? And so you might already be thinking, well, how do I use this information to get a better approximation of my derivative? And so what you might do is you might think, well, if I can, all of my error here is coming from this third term in my Taylor series. So, so far, all of my error uh, has ended up being from this term here, these kind of uh, delta t squared times the second derivative of f. We call that the curvature of f, how much it curves, uh, because we're dividing by delta t here. So what if I could develop a scheme that cancels those two terms out and pushes my error to this next uh, delta t cubed term? That would probably be a better scheme. And so that is actually a really good idea, and that is called a central difference. That's what I drew here in this really faint blue line that you can barely see, is that if I drew a line between t plus delta t and t minus delta t, if I use that, as my approximation of my slope, that might do a better job because I claim it's going to cancel out these, these Taylor series terms. So this is called central difference. Central difference. And so the central difference derivative is going to be, um, essentially, we're going to take, um, I'm just going to subtract these two first, and then I'm going to divide by delta t. OK, so I'm actually going to constructively build the center difference. We're literally going to take um, you know, the first equation minus the second equation, which is uh, f of t plus delta t minus f of t minus delta t. Let's hope I don't mess this up. And this is where it gets kind of cool, because these have, neg like this is the term I want, this df dt. Uh, 
Because these have negative signs, if I subtract this one from this one, I just get twice as much DFDT. So that's kind of cool. So all the odd terms cancel. I'm sorry, all the even terms cancel. My F of T's cancel when I subtract this from this. My um, delta T squared terms cancel. My delta T to the fourth terms cancel because those are all even and have the same sign. And all my odd terms just get multiplied by two because this minus negative itself is just two times itself. So this equals all these terms cancel, and I just get these odd terms. So this is 2 df dt delta x, uh, delta t. Sorry, these are not delta x's. We're taking uh, finite delta t's. This would all work if you wanted to take the derivative of a function of space of x. You just replace all the t's with x's, no big deal. So uh, 2 df dt times delta t. Um, my even terms here cancel, so now I get my odd terms. So this would be plus um, 2 delta t cubed over 3 factorial d cubed f dt cubed plus dot, dot, dot. And now if I want to be really clever, I'll notice that my fourth order term is probably also going to get canceled because it's even. So, you know, star minus double star, all the even terms die. So this is not order delta t cubed. This is actually going to be order delta t to the fifth because the next term I'm going to have in my series is, a, is the odd delta t to the fifth term. And then the sixth order is going to die and I'll get a seventh order. And then the eighth order is not going to be there, but I'll get a ninth order. I only have the odd terms in this. And so you see, this is actually already doing a much better job of isolating the thing I want, this DFDT, and now my error is higher order. I have killed my delta T squared, and I only have my delta T cubed. So now I can take this scheme, and I should probably divide by 2 delta T to get to isolate the thing I want. So um, DFDT is approximately equal to F of T plus delta T minus f of t minus delta t divided by 2 delta t. That's going to equal the thing I want, dft, plus an error term, which is delta t squared over 3 factorial d cubed f dt cubed plus order delta t to the fifth, okay, plus dot, 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 plus all of that stuff. And so again, this is the thing we wanted. So this is actually a good approximation of the thing we wanted, the first derivative dft. And now my leading order error term, all of this is error. And so my error is on the order now of delta t squared. And this is a really big deal, okay? So my error being on the order of delta t squared is a really, really big deal. What that means is that if I want my, my approximation to be 100 times better, I only have to make delta t 10 times smaller. So if I make delta t 10 times smaller, my error gets 100 times smaller. Whereas up here, if I wanted 100 times less error, I needed 100 times smaller delta t. And this is a big deal. This means that uh, if I want a good, accurate approximation of my derivative on data, with this scheme, I'd need to collect 10 times less data than with these schemes to have the same error accuracy. Okay, I'd need a, I'd need a delta t that's 10 times smaller here than here. Uh, to get 100 times more accurate data. And that gets even worse the more accurate I want. This is literally like delta t squared. So if I wanted it a million times more accurate, I would divide delta t by 1,000 here, but I'd still have to divide delta t by a million here. That's much, much worse. Okay, good. Um, that is mostly what I wanted to show you. Uh, maybe what I'll do for the last step is I will erase this uh, and we'll actually code these up and... Um, and I'll show you kind of what, uh, what that looks like in Python and MATLAB. So stay tuned, or stay put, rather. OK, so now we have kind of uh, either written down or derived these different approximations of the first derivative, dfdt, of my function. And using the Taylor series, what we have found is that we get the, the derivative we want plus a finite amount of error, which scales with the little time step, the little delta t I'm using to approximate this derivative, okay? Um, 
And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to code up these three schemes, the forward difference, backward difference, central difference. Um, and maybe I'll draw a tiny little cartoon down here just to remind ourselves, you know, uh, this is pretty simple, but I'll just do my little tiny cartoon here. And I have, you know, f so this is the point I care about, T. And then this is T plus delta T. This is T minus delta T. And this is, you know, F of T, F of T plus delta T, F of T minus delta T. So the forward difference approximation is this red line here. The backward difference approximation is the slope of this orange line here. And the central difference approximation is the slope of this blue line here, which you can almost see. I think you can convince yourself that that blue line is already doing a better job than either the orange line or the pink line. The orange line's overshooting, the pink line's undershooting. And actually, you can see that the, the pink line is uh, kind of, it's off because this thing has a positive, uh, what is the curvature? The second derivative of this is negative, actually. And so it, this is a negative error term because this curvature is negative. And so this is undershooting. The pink line is, is too small. The orange line, I, I erased it, but I had an error term that was minus d squared f dt. That was a, the, the negative of the curvature. That would be a positive number. So the orange line is actually overshooting this. It's too high. And the blue line is doing much better uh, because its error is now proportional to the third derivative um, times something much, much smaller, delta t squared. OK, so we're going to do this uh, in MATLAB. We'll do this in Python. Basically the same thing. Um, you don't have to worry about which, which one you want. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to start by picking some delta t that is not too small but not too big. Delta t equals 0.2. And I'm going to define a time vector from minus 2 to 4 in increments of, this really should be uh, in increments of dt. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm picking a really, really small dt just for plotting. And then we're going to plot our derivative on top of that. So I'm picking a really, you know, a small dt for plotting. And I'm defining f of t equals sine of t. That's just some function I know the derivative of. I know the derivative of f of t exactly is cosine of t. So I'm going to plot my approximate derivatives, these guys here. I'm going to plot that against my exact cosine of t derivative on this, this fine delta t just for plotting. In the next lecture, I'm going to do this on data. So here we're going to assume we actually have access to this function f. Um, so for example, when we compute df dt, uh, you know, we're going to take sine of t plus delta t, you know, sine of t plus delta t minus sine of t divided by delta t. This assumes I have access to that function f of t, which in my case is sine. In the next lecture, I'll show you how do you do this if I just have a vector of data. If I just have a vector of data, but I, I can't ask for that function at any point. I just have a vector of data. How do we approximate these? That's, that's the next lecture. But for now, I'm assuming we have access to dfdt. OK, so first things first, I'm going to plot uh, my clean function f, my fine exact function. And I'm going to plot the exact derivative. Um, and let's just see what that looks like. OK, easy. So uh, I should probably label my axes. This is time. Maybe I'll, I'll do that. Um, so this is x label, I don't know how to spell, x label is time, uh, y label is f of t or df dt. So um, let's say my function. Okay, so time and whatever function, whether it's the, der the function or the derivative, and these are the two functions, so that's really good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start computing this forward difference approximation for each of these points, um, and we're going to plot those, okay? So the forward difference is going to be, um, I'm literally going to take, in MATLAB this is kind of easy because t is a vector of time. If I evaluate sine of that vector t, it's going to give me a vector of outputs sine at each of those values. So I can take that vector t plus my delta t, and it'll give me the output you know, uh, of that entire vector of times plus a delta t. So f plus delta t at all of the times I cared about, minus sine of t 
divided by dt. So that's my forward difference. So this big F means forward. The big B means backwards. This is just sine of t minus sine of t minus delta t divided by dt. And then the central difference, big, big C here, is sine of t plus delta t minus sine of t minus delta t divided by 2 delta t. And I'm just going to plot all three of those, and we're going to see which ones are better or worse. Okay. Let's hope this works. I should probably have run everything. Okay, good. And so now this is a little bit cluttered, but you can see, right, the function is this dashed line. And then all of my derivatives are these different, uh, these kind of different colored lines here. So you can see that I have my exact derivative in white, my forward difference in uh, yellow, backwards difference in pink, and central difference in cyan. And so if I wanted to, I could probably zoom in uh, on a region here. So I could zoom in on a region here. And you would see, for example, just like we predicted, the forward difference derivative is over predicting. So this, this kind of blue white line here, that's the exact derivative and my central difference. So they're almost perfect. My exact derivative, which is just cosine of t, and my uh, central difference are almost perfectly on top of each other. So that's awesome. And my forward difference is overshooting. Uh, the yellow curve, my forward difference is overshooting in this case uh, because I guess this has a positive curvature. My backwards difference, pink, is undershooting. It's, it's predicting a little bit too small of a derivative. And my central difference is doing almost perfect. It's, it's really, really good. I'm pretty sure if I zoomed in a little more, I would see, um, you know, I'm pretty sure I could see some error if I zoomed in enough. But look at how much I have to zoom in to see any error at all. It's almost perfect. So this really just shows kind of pictorially how to actually compute these things. If I have a function f I can query at a point, you know, t plus delta t, t minus delta t, and t. And it also shows that the central difference is way, way better than all of these other schemes. Um, what I should probably do now is also pick a bigger delta t, let's say 0.5. This is probably going to be terrible because 0.5 is not really a small delta t, right? Um, we're making kind of an infinitesimal approximation here, and delta t 0.5 is not that infinitesimal. So as you can see, all of the errors got bigger by i. Um, so if I zoom in a little bit, let's just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can already see that they're bigger. Um, so there's more error. In fact, the central difference is also, you know, even by i, you can see the central difference is, diff is, is bigger. And the central difference is getting bigger at certain places and smaller at other places. That has to do with this, this cubic, uh, sorry, this third order derivative df, uh, d cubed f dt cubed. So the leading effect of this error term is this delta t squared. That means if I make delta t smaller or bigger, this is how the error will scale. But it is multiplied by this kind of constant, or this function, really. And so when, d, when, when the third derivative of f is really large, this error will be larger. When the third derivative is really small, this will be really small. And what's the third derivative of sine? First derivative is cosine, second derivative is sine, third derivative is cosine. So I predict that the error of my central difference will be large whenever, you know, cosine of, f, cosine of t is large. That's, that's because of this, this term here. Good. Um, that was pretty easy. Let's, uh, let's switch to Python. Okay, so we're going to, you know, plot these, we're going to compute and plot these finite difference, uh, forward difference, backward difference, central difference in Python now. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to a, an f of t that we know what its derivative is. So we're going to use f of t equals sine of t. Uh, we know its exact derivative is cosine of t. And so we're going to plot these approximations against that exact derivative. So uh, we're going to compute this on a, you know, t equals negative 2 to 4 with a fine resolution. We're going to plot the, the, the function and its derivative. So that's like literally what we have here. This is uh, the function and its derivative as a function of time. And then we're going to approximate for this uh, delta t equals 0.2, dt equals 0.2. We're going to approximate the forward difference, that's big F, the backwards difference, that's big B, and the central difference, that's big C, as sine of my t vector plus delta t minus sine of my t vector divided by delta t. That's my forward difference. Backwards difference is sine of my t vector, that's f of t, minus sine of t minus delta t divided by delta t. 
And this is going to evaluate this at that whole vector of points t, t is a vector of points, all of those points minus delta t. And then my central difference is sine of t plus delta t minus sine of t minus delta t divided by 2 delta t. And when we plot all of those next to each other, we find, in fact, it's a little dark, it's a little hard to see, but you can see kind of uh, there is this, you know, the true derivative, this cosine is the true derivative. And then all three of my curves are actually pretty close. They're all, you know, shadowing this, this true derivative pretty accurately. And if we zoom in, you can see that the, uh, the forward difference, at least on, on the right-hand side of this, on, on, on this side of the curve, the forward difference is underpredicting. The backwards difference is overpredicting, and the central difference, which is this blue curve, is almost perfectly on top of this white curve. So central difference is totally nailing this derivative, and there's a little bit of error in these, again, based on the curvature. If we did this zoom in on the left side here instead of on the right, the forward and backwards difference errors would flip. In that case, then forward difference would be overpredicting and backwards would be underpredicting because in this point we'd have a you know a, a certain positive curvature as opposed to a negative curvature down here. Okay, and those are subtle things that you can read off of this um, this Taylor series expansion here. The other thing you can do, um, I would encourage you to do this, is to change your delta t, make it bigger, make it 0.5, and you'll see the error get way bigger. Maybe I'll just do this real quick. Um, so I'm going to run these. I'm going to make my dt 0.5. Okay, do all of this stuff. Uh, compute my finite derivatives. And now when I make dt 0.5, you see that my error noticeably gets bigger. Central difference is still doing pretty good. It's still doing way, way better than those. In fact, it's doing even more better because they're doing much worse. And this gets better faster with delta t. And then I can also do delta t equals 0.1. Uh, let's do that. Okay, and when delta t is small enough, even the forward and backwards uh, difference schemes are almost perfect. Their error shrinks proportional to delta t. Okay, so uh, we're going to look a lot more at this. Uh, we're going to do things like compute what is the Taylor series expansion for d squared fdt? How do we approximate d squared fdt, the second derivative? Again, we'll use Taylor series to cancel out stuff except for the term we want, which is the second derivative. And we'll talk about how to compute this on data. So that'll all be in the next lecture. Thank you.